Welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today, I'm sitting down in the old bourbon bunker, and I'm sitting down with old folk fanboy himself. What's up? What's going on, man? Oh, just hanging in there, man. You drank any old folk lately? I might have drank just a little bit. Was it good? It was delicious, as I, always. I knew it was. I didn't even have to wait to hear you list, hear you respond. <laughs> you it's know, good. if it's old it's delicious. That's right. I will tell you, I, I did have one store pick not that long ago at somebody's house. And it was the first one that I've tried, and I was just like, meh. I had one of those, too. I don't I don't talk about it. Right. It's like Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno? That's right. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. It's crazy when you have kids, dude. You hear all kinds of stuff. I ended up owning two of those bottles, and I ended up selling one of them. And somebody's like, you're getting rid of a 90-proof single barrel? It's huh. like, yeah, but I don't like it. Yeah. I didn't tell him. I didn't so the like one, it. the one that I did not care for was a barrel strength. So oh yeah, and that's unusual for me because you know me, I like it hot and heavy. But this one was just, it was super rye heavy. Like it was had a lot of spice. It hit you at one hundred and thirty five proof. And so it was like one twenty eight or one twenty nine, and it drank like one twenty eight, one twenty nine. Like I mean, it drank very very hot. You know, it actually probably drank a little hotter than those. That 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 level of heat. Interesting. So I don't know. But it wasn't bad. It just wasn't my cup of tea. It surprises me when I have a 90-proof Old Faux single barrel that I don't like. But I've come across a couple, but, you know, that's when you got a selection of 40 or 50, a couple of them's not unheard of. Right, right. So I've got two different pours here for you. One is the Old Faux High Angel Share Number 2, and the other one is a special blend that I made which was a blend of basically mellow corn, but it wasn't mellow corn. It was some Hiram Walker, 99% uh, corn whiskey. And then... Uh, and, some, and when you say 99% corn whiskey, it's 99% corn, and they threw a couple drops of malted barley in there for the 1%? Just for good measure, exactly. Yep. And, okay. and then um, I mixed a bottle of JTS Brown bottled in bond with it, and then I mixed a bottle of Michter's Rye. Because the 99.9 was just just super sweet. I mean, super super sweet. So I did that and I mixed it together. I let it sit for a while and I didn't I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. So then I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it in a barrel and I'm going to age it and double oak it and see what comes out of it. And we're talking one of these small novelty little barrels. 100 percent, a little one and a half gallon, you know, whatever, and put it in there. And but I tell you, I, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised on this one. That's just my humble opinion. Yeah. Humility. Humility. Let's see what we think about it. So you go ahead and walk us through it. So for me, you know, I did, like I said, it's a, it's very oak forward. It's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of leather. Get a little bit of um, what I would say is more like a stone fruit, almost like a like a peach or something like that. Your face did not hold up well on that on that first sip, man. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a little musty. So I was going to say, to me, it's it's got a little bit of a dusty flavor to it, like a little bit of like an old school dusty. And then maybe it's because it was in that extra barrel. I have no idea. But like, that's that's what I was about to say is it does have a little bit of like that old and I'm going to say almost like wild turkey dusty quality like that. Those early 101s. So the last time I drank something that had been one of the in one of these novelty barrels, I wasn't sure if mine was charred or not. I don't remember. I ended up with a freaking allergy to some oak crap right after i drank i'm a little nervous now you got me nervous but yep. i'm still going at it no I, I, I did cough and choke a little bit here with the first sip of this thing yep so i, I think it's very very wood forward definitely for sure um you get some of that rice spice in the mid palate and then uh some of those fruity or softer notes kind of on the finish i don't like it that's okay you don't have to like it what would you guess the proof is on this thing um i so I, I used a hydrometer when I when I tried it. It, it was coming in somewhere around 105. It drinks like a lower proof whiskey. Yep. It's pretty mellow. I mean, it doesn't have a whole lot of bite to it. It doesn't. Nope. I don't like it. You don't like it? Sorry. Right. You, you know. I don't like want to hurt said, your feelings, no, but it's I don't okay. like it. Like I said, to me, it drank similar to like old 101, like early 90s, early 80s, oh, 101. You, you got any of that turkey around here? I do have some. We'll get you a little nip here in a little bit. Um, or I could even say maybe Buffalo Trace's Mash Bill 1, if you can find some of their older stuff. Mash Bill 1 is their... Buffalo Trace, uh, new standard benchmark, all that stuff. Non-wheat whiskey. Right. Okay. Yep. So, but like I said, it, I don't know if putting in that 
extra oak barrel for, you know, the time frame that I put it in there. And it was only in there for like a week or two. Was that a one liter bottle you got over there? Um, this no. Thing, 175? It's a 175. Was so, that whole thing full? It was. You've been drinking on it? So I've been, I've been, I've been using this as a mixer. Oh. Honest to goodness. Yeah. I've been making a lot of cocktails out of it. Becky found this, um, she used to sell Tastefully Simple. I don't know if you know what that is. Not, or not a clue. But, so Tastefully Simple was this company and the, basically everything took two ingredients or less to make and they had everything from cheese balls to drink buckets. And in the drink buckets, they're basically like all these little, like. I mean, what can you make with less than two ingredients? Is it like, I'd like to make some ice? No, like beer bread. Like the bread mix was already mixed. All you did was put a little bit of melted butter and, so, and a can of beer in it and you stir it up and you bake it. Like a cheese sandwich, you got bread and cheese. Exactly. Two, two things. Yeah. And then in this situation, like I said, you got beer bread, you've got dips. There's tons of dips. Like there had like bacon, bacon, and onion, onion, and garlic, whatever. But literally it was like you added sour cream and mayonnaise or something like that. And then you mixed it with the, the seasoning that they give you and it makes a t- terrific dip. Hmm. So. Okay. Anyway, Becky sold that stuff for a long time and we found <laughs> in the basement a bunch of these drink mixers. That had not been opened. Some of them were like watermelon margarita. Some of them were blueberry mango. Some of them were all kinds of weird stuff. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I've got this bottle. It's it's good. It's not great. but And I literally just started making random mixers with it. And they all turned out pretty good. Cool. So And, and I could get Becky to drink bourbon that way. <laughs> all right. Your blend's not for me, but okay. All right. Now I'm going to cry just one deer. All right. It was the smallest tear, but that's okay. That's all right. Maybe putting a couple drops of tears in that would have made it better. I you should have tried. Hey, I'm okay. I'm not going to take a <laughs> risk now. Not taking a risk. Scared of that wooden barrel, huh? Yeah, probably. I'll get back with you on that in a couple of days. So we just got out of mini release season, right? And is that, a, kind of, is that a thing? Well, I mean, kind of that January to March, you have kind of uh, old, old, like, um, Weller Antique comes out, Stag Jr., like all the store picks. Have you been chasing those things? Because I know nothing of these. I don't typically chase them too hard. You do know I, I love an OWA store pick. I, I mean, do. So, uh, I'm, I mean, I know that you do. I have I, been I looking. I have been looking for those, and I've been looking for Stag Juniors. That's pretty much the only two that I have been chasing, and I have had zero luck so far, which is kind of sad. But I did see some Crown Royal Peach on the shelf the other day. It was Limit 2. Really? Yeah. They must be having some kind of weird shortage. I've I've heard that there have been, they've been almost allocating that stuff. It, and they, the, like, is the Crown Royal Apple as well or the Caramel Apple? Was it? No. I got no idea. They had Limit 2 on it at Total Wine. I was there last week. Hmm. That's had, unusual to see something like that allocated. I think they just wanted to save some for the soccer moms. I don't know. I don't drink Canadian whiskey, so. So do you ever watch TikTok? Yeah, only when it catches up in my Facebook feed and I'm really bored. So. Every now and then I watch, and there's a couple of dudes on there that make mixed drinks. And almost every one of those mixed drinks, it seems like, has Crown Royal Peach in it. So it must be where it's all going. Probably so. So Probably cool. so. I don't know. What um, what have you had unique here over the last month? Because we haven't been together for a while. Um, I'd say on the unique side, mm, probably more along the lines of, uh, honestly, a lot of the old Forrester stuff that got released over kind of that, that late late, late winter, the high angel share we're about to try. Um, I got a single barrel. Um, I want to say it was the military bottle that got released, the old Forrester military bottle. Oh, I didn't know. Veterans Day. That one was one that I tried. It was pretty good. Um, and then also, um, I've been, I've been diving into a, a handful of different like Michters, smoke wagons, things like that, that, you know, other people have had, I've got one or two of, you know, each one of those type of things. But, um, honestly, I, the smoke wagon I have, I, I've only got one left. It's not even the uncut unfiltered. It's the, the straight whiskey. Um, so trying a couple of those uncut unfiltered, you know, the 10 and 12 year old ones are, are, have been pretty, pretty unique just overall. Have you tried any of the pre-mixed old-fashioned drinks that some of the distilleries are coming out with? Like, it's already liquor and whatever mix or blend together. So, no, but I do have a couple of the ones that are like the old Forster dropper bottles that, like, you use to make, like, an old-fashioned or different yeah. things like that. I've got a couple of those. Um, but as far as the distilleries, no, I don't have any of those that I've, that I've tried yet. I got one for my birthday back in January. 
and I've drank about half of the fifth. And it's the Handy and Schiller Old Fashioned Cocktail Bourbon. Oh, I bet that's delicious. That's Buffalo Trace's yeah. uh, brand. It is really good. I was going to say, if it's, if it's based out with some kind of handy or something like that, it's got to be pretty tasty. I mean, it's, it is pretty darn tasty. And I was trying to see if I could find the, the proof on it here, but I don't know. I can't. Um, oh, 84 proof. So it's a low proof drink. But it's just darn tasty. It's got the right amount of sweetness, maybe a little too much sweetness, um, because my personal, you know, homemade ones are very little sugar, a little more bitters for me. But what I'm, but this at 84 proof, I think, uh, made by Sazerac brand. I said Buffalo Trace, but it's made by Sazerac. So, uh, good bottle. Have you tried any of the Russ Smith? I haven't. So I've noticed all these athletes that are coming out with their own special varieties and things to that nature. I mean, Charles Woodson's got his own stuff. As a matter of fact, Charles Woodson even just came out with a wine. Um, and then you've got Russ Smith. and then. Um, so I'll tell you why I haven't. I haven't because for Christmas I got some, uh, and maybe my birthday, I got some Total Wine gift cards. Right. And I've been confining my spending to Total Wine because that's where I had gift cards. And I think the Mr. and Mrs., which is the Russ Smith, is only being sold right now at Liquor Barn. Really? Only at Liquor Barn? Locally, I think that's the only one that's carrying it. Hmm. I haven't seen it at Total Wine, so I have not gone over there yet. Um, I've been tempted to try the 12-year. Do you know where he sourced it from? I do not. He's got a 12-year, but I'm, I'm I haven't even not seen sure. the label yet. I mean, if he's fully transparent, you should be able to tell almost immediately, unless it says Kentucky Straight Bourbon. I haven't zoomed into the label to see where it came from. Gotcha. So, I don't know. What else you been trying? So, well, that's what I was going to tell you. So, um... I was up in Indianapolis with uh, the wife and the kiddos and stuff, and there was a. Uh, do, you, do you remember Alan Henderson that played for Indiana back in the nineties, like early two thousands? I'm a Cardinal fan. I don't know anything I, about the who, who, who's I, yours. But I know who Purvis Ellison is. I well, know who, who does Bradford know? Smith. Come I know, on, dude. I know who we're talking stars versus you know, IU guys. Dewan Wheat. I mean, I, listen, dude. <laughs> Alan Henderson was a perennial. Uh, he played in the NBA for I'm years. Messing. Look how you just got bent out of shape over your who who. Hoosiers. <laughs> I mean, but geez, I mean, dude, he spent way more time in the pros than most of those other guys Come on, did. Never Nervous Purvis? Never Nervous Purvis was in there for a couple of years, but, you know, <laughs> Purvis didn't, he was not a perennial player. He only played, what, like six, seven seasons in the NBA? What are we talking about? Uh, we were talking about, anyway, Alan Henderson. Did I just chime you up on something? You did. You got me all fired up now. I'm making fun of Alan Henderson. Anyway, Alan Henderson has like. I don't even know who he is. So Alan Henderson was a basketball player, number 44 at IU. I think he played from like 90 seven to probably like 2000 something like that he was with calbert cheney and all them we probably should have won a national championship very with them, but he got hurt bobby knight era towards the end of bobby's era correct yep yeah. so probably would have had a, a national championship with alan henderson but he broke his leg or broke his foot um sometime like i want to say like in the maybe in the first round of the ncaa tournament like it was really really late in the year anyway long story short he came long out with, story long, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> he came out with like what you're talking about, like an old fashioned in a bottle. And uh, I tried it at this place because I just had to try it. I was like, hey, it's Alan Henderson. Let's support the Hoosier guy and, and go from there. And it was actually pretty good. It wasn't too bad. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't fantastic, but it, it, you know, I don't know. I'd like to get him on the show to be like, "Hey, what's your thought process? Where'd you go? Where'd you're this come a, from?" A Hoosier geek. Well, not only that, but I mean, you want to get him to autograph a basketball for you too? No, you know, I'm not. I, I, Sign I'll be that honest, bald head. Of I've yours. got, I've got three autographed Indiana things. Period, and they're all three from coaches, and and, and none of those coaches coach at IU anymore. <laughs> so I'm not getting any more stuff. Well, that's beginning to be a long list of people. Dude, I'm telling you, dude. I, I've got a, I've got a Robert Montgomery Knight, a Tom Crean, and an Archie Miller. A Robert Montgomery. You know, you could have just said Bob. No, nah, it's Robert Montgomery. It's Is that why he signed it? No, he signed it Bobby Knight. Oh, okay. And his signature's very, I don't know, it's weird. I mean, it's got like the big he tape. was throwing a chair or something when he signed it? No, no, no. Nothing like that. No. You know, the general. The general's a legend, dude. He's a legend. He's, so, like, he's, like, he's like Denny. He's a legend. Denny is a legend. I was at a game a couple weeks ago, and Denny and I'm just drawing a blank here. Um, North Carolina. Oh, Roy Williams. Roy Williams. They were sitting together, sitting real close to it. Or Roy had gone over to be close to Denny, or vice versa. I don't. Roy went over to Denny. Yeah. yeah. Were you at the game? Yeah, I was with you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, squirrel. 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 Yeah. Once again. So over the last couple of weeks, I've tried a few random things. I was over at a friend's house last week and he had a box that had been shipped to him from the dancing goat distillery, American corn whiskey. 
dancing goat. Uh, so American corn whiskey. I, I don't know what American corn whiskey is versus bourbon. So, I mean, technically, as long as it's in a new charred oak barrel, it's still bourbon. It's just most people, traditionalists, like to see a third a third grain in there. Okay, so this <laughs> appears to have been one of the seal box. Oh, uh, seal box pick? Yeah. Yeah, seal box picks. 62.2%, seven year old. It was really sweet. So I'm assuming it was mostly all corn. The old dancing goat. But it was really sweet. Pretty good. Um, drank the whole. If you zoom in on the label, is it uh, Let's see. MGP? Is it sourced in Indiana or does it say? It does this 100% American. Oh, it's 100% corn. Right. So there's no oh. barley. All right. Not bourbon because they didn't want it to be uses oh so their corn whiskey utilizes second use bourbon barrels gotcha so that's why it's whiskey whiskey that's why it's whiskey there you go tuttons uh produced and bottled by dancing goat in cambridge wisconsin huh i'll be damned so i'm assuming produced and bottled produced is an odd word to be there instead of distilled and bottled but i'll assume it's from them they're from wisconsin dude yeah all right wisconsin's are weirdos anyways it was good I uh, got to drink that, and then directly following that, I mean, these two weren't even comparable. We had a smoke wagon private barrel, 12-year-old. Ooh, a single barrel? A single barrel. Um, what was the proof on that bad boy? 56.5% ABV. That's kind of low for them, but I bet it was still delicious. It was delicious. 12-year-old delicious. MGP, you can't beat that. Yep. Um, and then, just this last weekend... I was up in French Lick, Indiana. Um, anytime I travel to French Lick, I stop by the Big Red Liquors that's, right. you know, yep. half mile away from the casino area. Picked up a Big Red Liquors exclusive pick of the Senator Barrel Proof Straight Rye Whiskey. There you barrel. go. My favorite Senator ever was the one that Matt gave me a try of, and it was from the Jews and Booze group. The thing was fantastic. This one reined in a little over 109 proof, six years old, straight okay. rye whiskey. Phenomenal. Yep. MGP, baby. 95.5. MGP, and it very clearly on the back says 95.5 MGP rye whiskey. Um, dude, it was good. Yep. Uh, Senator and them, the, so they got like the scissor, they have the Senator, and then they have like the presidential, and then they have some other, I don't know what it is. It could be the representative for all I remember. But anyway, they that's all those are named kind of that way. Gotcha. Good stuff. What else? So I drank the Senator. High Angel Share, number two. Oh, you got High Angel Share, number two in front I do. of you. Squir- I do. Squirrel? I'm smelling it. Squirrel? I'm just, I'm trying to redirect you. So you haven't had anything else here over the last couple weeks? I mean, you know, I mean, I, so I had a couple of Stag Junior store picks that people had sent me samples of. Delicious. Um, Bardstown Bourbon Company, um, the Ferrand, I had that. It was, it was pretty good. Um, the one I really, really want to try is the Bardstown Bourbon Company they just released. I think it was like the KBS Stout Bottle. So basically, they got the KBS um, stout barrel back from them, and then they aged bourbon in it. So I'm kind of curious what that tastes like on top of the old, the the from the beer. So there is a bottle that I bought uh, while I was at Total Wine, and I haven't opened it up yet. And I kind of bought it just out of intrigue, but it was a Midway Distilling Company Colonel Francisco rye whiskey finished in rum barrels, like Midway Kentucky. Yes, Midway can t- I think, but I believe it's MGP juice as well, rye whiskey. Mm-hmm. But they finished it. It looks like it's 110 proof. On top of the bottle, in the packaging, they had a little spinner style coin. Kind of why I bought it. It had a spinner coin on it, so it was a little taterific for me. But I've been meaning to open it. But I'm assuming that rye whiskey finished in a rum barrel is going to be really good. I bet it'd be delicious. And we've tried some. I tried the Starlight one. It was delicious. So. All right, High Angel Share number two. You got to dive in on this bad boy. Tell me what you think. Okay. The nose, very hundred, reminiscent of hundred, Angel Share one. 110 proof? Um, I believe so. I'll put the bottle up. I don't even know. This was High Angel Share batch number two yep. that got released, I want to say, while I was September? in Florida. I thought it was December. Uh, it would have been December. You're right. I was down in Florida and my it was phone the other starts one that was, the other Warehouse K was released in September. So. Phone starts blowing up of everybody's like, Olfo's dropping some High Angel Share Batch too. And I'm like, I'm in Florida dropping some drinks, bro. Yep. You right. probably, probably drank a whole bottle of 1910 while you were down there? Nah, this, we were at Universal Studios. Uh-oh. That's where I picked up the, oh, that's the other thing that I picked up. What did I get? 
the 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 butter beer the blue note (laughs) oh blue note yeah i was at the hard rock uh, we stayed at the hard rock hotel and they had a blue note single barrel which i never really saw the origin of it but i think it was barton's Mm. um it was really good caramel bomb all over it caramel delicious yep so good so what do you get on the nose on this bad boy what do i get on the nose I mean, it's a very, a little bit of alcohol burn, to be honest with you. There's a little bit of, there's definitely a little bit of heat on this one. You put your nostril in there and you get a little burn just on that bad boy. Uh, But it's it's a very similar old foe nose. Yeah. Get a little bit of oak, get a little bit of leather, getting a little bit of like... um, Blueberry? No. (laughs) Sugar notes, like a... (laughs) Almost like a flan or you know, like a snickerdoodle. Dude, like, a, dude, you're gonna have to cook some flan because I I don't have a clue I, I've, what I've, flan. So I've never made is. flan. I just we we get it when we go to certain restaurants. They have it. Um, what's McGall used to have a good flan in downtown New Albany? What's the Cuban restaurant there? Uh, and do they have empanadas? They do have empanadas and they're delicious. Um, anyway, the Cuban restaurant next in downtown New Albany, mm-hmm. they they had some pretty good flan, and then. Uh, the place out there, Mojitos on Brownsboro Road, had pretty good flan at one time. I don't know if they both still carry it or not. I'm assuming they do it. I wouldn't know how to nose flan, but it does have some fruit forward in this thing. So a little bit of sugar. Yep. Oh, that's good. Mid palate, definitely got some rye. <laughs> oh, it's got a little burn to it. <laughs> it's got some rye. It's got a little bit of heat to it. It's definitely got some heat to it. So mid palate. So We've had this discussion. Is that where the bacon and eggs get lodged, or is that where the biscuits and gravy get lodged? Uh, I'm going to say bacon and eggs for sure. You know, kind of in that midsection of your mouth. You know, you get in there, you get get a couple of pieces of bacon stuck in there, and then you know, kind of that way. The biscuits and gravy typically get caught on the umbling god gotta thing, the little they, flappy thing on the back of your throat. They all get stuck in the gut, though. They all do get stuck in the gut, but I need definitely some breakfast. definitely got a little bit of fruitiness to it. Um, I will tell you though, I mean, like it's definitely got some sweetness, but it's it's like a like a almost like a weird spicy sweetness. I can't really put put a drop a little bit of water in it. I know you don't like to do that. Taste on it. I'm still gonna give. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it another sip before I put water in it. Oh, okay. But the fruit I'm getting is almost like almost like a fig. We're gonna have to sit and just go through eating all these random things that you're nosing and explaining here. You never had a fig? I mean, probably like ten years ago. I didn't mean I know what it tastes like. I mean, I mean if you ask me if I knew... It's like a sweet, earthy flavor. I don't like to eat earth, though. Have you ever... Okay. Um, the protein bars. Um, RX bars or... Uh, do, do I look like I work out? I, dude, it's... Uh, I understand. Some people Some people just have protein bars and things like that just to, for, you know, to eat something in a, in, a, in, a, in a pinch, man. I don't know. But yes, my wife works see, out a lot. So. I see some Cheetos over there. I like to eat Cheetos. Go grab you some, man. Got some Cheetos. Got some um, the the popcorn that's got the M and M's mixed with it. There's all kinds of goodies over there. Squirrel. Um, I dropped a little bit of water in this thing, and you know, similar to the other day when we were nosing the 1910, mm-hmm. it's like a green apple pop in this thing. And I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm making that up just out of memory here, but it's like a caramel green apple. I don't know. I like Old Forester. I love the nose on them. Love the nose on them. High Angel shares better than the Scott blend. So the the nose on this thing is, with the water, I don't know. It does get a little sweeter. A little bit more of the fruit comes out, but it's I, feel, I feel like you lose some of the oak. You lose some of the some of the leather and stuff like that. Do you like leather? Um, so to me, yes, it's a, it's definitely a, it's, it's an earthier tone, but I do like, kind of like the smell of it. God, it's like I, that, it's like that old bomber leather jacket or like a, a couch or, um, you know, your car seats, things like that. Like that smell of that, that leather. I've got this thing lodged in my head. Whenever someone says earthy, I go back, I had a, a bad bottle of Henry McKenna 10 a couple of years ago and, and it was like drinking peat moss. And so every time somebody says earthy. That's what you think of as like I immediately scotch. go back to drinking this mm-hmm. bad bottle of McKenna tin that I had that was just not good. But so I, I don't know. The earthy throws me off when you say that. Good, bad, indifferent. So the fruit definitely comes out a little bit more. I feel like you get a little bit more of a like you said, like green apple. Um it could almost be like almost like a stone fruit, almost like a peach, but it's like that that not real bright flavor of like a fruit. A couple drops of water, pretty darn good. It calmed down some of the rye spice uh, in this one. Which is unusual for the most part. Which is unusual. Maybe I'm just making it up, but 
You it, could be. It smoothed it out for me. So we had two unique pours. Talked about some of the stuff being released. Obviously, the High Angel shared, you know, to you know, kills the old the old Scott mix. So yeah, I don't need any more Scott mix. <laughs> I'm going to send you home with a bottle. Hopefully I make it away from this uh, novelty barrel without any allergy to oak. I don't think you'll have anything. Thank Man, you. Being being mean to me. You probably didn't You probably didn't age yours in water like you're supposed to. You I did. probably screwed something up, dude. It's just me. Yeah. I don't know. All if right. I would have put Old Forester in it, I probably would have had no problem, but I put early times in it, so maybe it was the early times. So go out to your local liquor stores look for your releases hopefully you'll find you a, a weller antique 107 or a weller full proof or a stag junior you know in one You're of those such places a tater. listen y- y- people want to know about all the stuff that's out there tater or not tater it. you know um hopefully um old forester will get some of these other bottles out into the to the masses you know since they're they, they have to i think legally take 10 percent of the, the batch and send it out into the wild i thought that was up for legislation to change that in the state of kentucky it, it is i think i just don't know if it's passed yet or not I, I but i do know that yes that there was something about that but but there's a whole big thing about single barrels in general that there's the thing but that's going to be a whole nother episode where basically they're saying that single barrels are illegal Oh, yeah. Nice. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that whole thing. People just want my whiskey. That's right. All right. So, if you want to find Bourbon Barrel Talk, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter. And then you can also email us at bourbonbarreltalk at gmail.com. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Check us out on either Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, Google Podcast, um, Amazon Music, all those good things. We're all over the place. Get your episodes as soon as they're downloaded. Uh, Make sure you listen. Share it on your Facebook page. Tag one of us. I'm Scott. You got Matt and you got Josh. You know, all three of us were out here. We love this place. You know, uh, we love what we're doing. Make sure you get us in there. But anyway, this is Scott and OFO Fanboy signing off. Peace. Peace.